Welcome to the Build Your Reiki Business Podcast. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing, founder of the Reiki Business Collective and creator of the Build Your Reiki Business Program, sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business. Greetings, welcome, and thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Build Your Reiki Business Podcast. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing, honored and excited to have you here yet again, so thank you so very much. In this week's episode, we are talking about hosting a summit. So if you are interested in hosting a summit, a conference, I am taking you behind the scenes of the Reiki Business Summit, how I organize that and set that up, offering lessons learned, tips and tricks for hosting your own summit. Now, part one of this two-part episode aired last week. I'll drop that link down below so that you can click on it and tune in to uh, part number one. But this week is part number two, and we're going to pick up where we left off last week, talking about the format of the summit. When you uh, conceptualize your summit, I talked about last week that idea of the format and what kind of format, what kind of container do you want your summit to take? So I mentioned that I really wanted the Reiki Business Summit container to be live. I also originally conceptualized it as a two-day event, a weekend event. And as I asked people to participate and they said yes, and as I looked at the calendar and thought, hmm, there's a lot that I want to fit in here, I realized, hmm, we're going to need to make it more days. <laughs> so the Reiki Business Summit quickly went from being November 22nd and 20, no, November 23rd and 24th to November 22nd through the 25th. So it quickly went from two days to four days. Thankfully, there was flexibility to be able to do that, not only on my part, but also on the speaker's part. I want to thank a couple of speakers who were uh, very agreeable in shifting their talks as the number of days expanded in the summit, as people said yes, uh, <laughs> as everyone said yes, and yet there were still a couple of more people on the list to reach out to for the summit. By the way, we already have a couple of speakers lined up for next year's summit as well. Very excited about that. But that container of the number of days that you might want your summit or conference to be is really important to consider as well. You know, as I was looking at the calendar and conceptualizing the Reiki Business Summit and uh, how to organize the schedule, one of the things I mentioned it in last week's episode that was so very important was having plenty of time for group discussion, connection, and interaction. One of the things that is really super about the Reiki Business Summit is that, that each attendee is also really participating in the summit. So if you attend the summit, if you register for the summit and attend, you are also a participant because there is time built in after each talk, after each presentation for small group discussion based upon the speaker's topic. And so, for instance, I'm talking on Saturday about community, the importance of community in our Reiki business, um, how to create your own community, how to find a community. And so um, after my talk, there will be an hour of group discussion, small groups where you will be able to meet with other attendees of the summit. Reiki practitioners and business owners from across the world to talk about your own experiences, talk about your uh, own input, offer your own opinions, 
talk about your thoughts, about my thoughts, and be able to interact live with one another in that really powerful way. And so each attendee of the summit is actually participating in the summit. This is something that is so very unique about the Reiki Business Summit and that I'm excited about and that others are excited about too, that live interactive component. It's, it's really very special. But as I was looking at the schedule and figuring out how to uh, structure the talks, um, part of the reason that I knew it then needed to go to four days was because of the necessary time for interaction, the, the networking time and that group discussion time after each talk. I also know that Zoom fatigue is a real thing. And I did not want, I could have shoved the whole conference, the whole summit into two days. Yes, I could have done that, but I didn't want to wear you out. (laughs) You know, being in front of a screen all day for a couple of days in a row is very tiring. I also recognize that you have a life outside of the Reiki Business Summit and outside of your Reiki business. And you may even have your own Reiki business things to do during the days of the summit or non-Reiki business things as well, work, life things, children things, partner things, whatever. We all have lots of things going on in our lives. And so I didn't want to try to cram everything into two days and I wanted to spread it out. Now, this has an added benefit that if someone maybe works all weekend and couldn't join on Saturday or Sunday, they could still join on Friday and Monday. So it was really clear that moving it to four days While, of course, honestly, taking up more of my time in terms of the hosting was really for the best for the summit itself. And of course, then therefore the attendees and even the speakers too. But um, as you contemplate your own summit and creating your own summit, it's important to really ask yourself about that schedule and what's best for the audience. Like I mentioned in last week's episode, that idea of what the audience's needs are. So making sure that you are fulfilling those audience needs. Now, as far as that structure for your summit goes, another thing that is important to consider in that idea of the container is how you want to offer it. Now, of course, if this is in person, an in-person event, um, that's going to be different from if it's online. The Reiki Business Summit is completely live and completely online. And that is to be able to serve Reiki business owners all across the world. I've had multiple requests to Christian, can you please host an in-person Reiki business gathering? And sure, I could do that. But if I did, I would want to make it convenient and easy for me. And central Pennsylvania is not convenient and easy for the whole world. And so while sure, yes, I could host uh, an in-person Reiki business event, but you might not want to come to it. You might not want to drive the whole way or fly or whatever, making sure that you are tailoring the format to them. But if you're doing this online, there are a lot of different options. Um, I also just want to say as far as in person, you've got the option of hosting it at one particular location. Again, depending upon the number of days, you could have a one-day conference or summit or retreat or whatever other event you want to host, or you could have a multi-day event. You could house it at all different kinds of places, Um, a wellness center, a community center, a fire hall, a convention center, a school, all different, you know, a university, all different kinds of places. Any space that you could rent, you could host your event. Online also offers uh, multiple options too. And what this comes down to is really, in a sense, how you want to deliver the event, how you want to deliver the content, um, how you want to uh, get the 
content out to the attendees, the registrants. If you are hosting it online, there are so many different ways you can do it. Of course, like I mentioned in last week's episode, you can um, record, pre-record the contents and then deliver it. So you could have people just simply purchase the summit. Uh, You could also do a free summit. That's okay. You don't have to charge. You can do a free one. This is very common. Um, that people use a free summit as a way to, um, there too, programs that allow you to host a summit that functions in the same way as an in-person conference. You know, an in-person conference where you go from room to room to room, um, where there are different uh, speakers speaking at different times. You choose the room you want to go to, and then there's time for networking opportunities and all different kinds of things. There is software that will do that, uh, except in an online environment. And so I did look into that. It was really fascinating and interesting. I decided that it wasn't exactly the right fit for the Reiki Business Summit. Um, One of the reasons was that it was important when I was creating the schedule for the summit to not have more than one talk at a time. I did not want to have the kind of structure where you could choose from different talks like in an in-person conference because I don't know about you, but when I go to an in-person conference and there is more than one talk that I want to attend at the same time, I'm disappointed. And I don't want you to be disappointed that you can't attend a talk that you really want to talk to attend because there's another talk at the same time. So um, there is no conflict in the Reiki Business Summit schedule with uh, the talks themselves. Um, But that is something to consider. I can't remember, I'm sorry, the name of that uh, software program that I had looked at was very interesting. It was also very expensive. And especially for this first summit, I wanted to really strive to keep it as low cost as possible. Now, when I say as low cost as possible, I will mention that I have taken out some ads on the Reiki Business Summit. Um, I will talk about ads in a future podcast episode and really uh, offer you some tips on how to effectively run ads for your Reiki business. Um, But uh, yeah, definitely don't run an ad until you listen to that podcast episode. That'll be forthcoming in the near future. But that software was pretty expensive and um, was more than we needed for this first Reiki Business Summit. Maybe in the future, who knows? Um, Or maybe the format will always be this way. I don't know. I do know, however, that there will be another Reiki Business Summit because I already have a couple of speakers lined up for next year with others on my list to ask. And so this first summit needed to just be pretty easy and simple, especially honestly for me. I have a lot going on in my Reiki business. And at the time that I was organizing the summit and bringing it all together, I was also writing Reiki Business Ready. I was also creating the Distance Reiki Business Builder Program. I was also meeting with my Build Your Reiki Business Program members, uh, clients, um, you know, all kinds of the other things, everything I do in my Reiki business, I was doing it. <laughs> And uh, so I needed to keep the summit as easy as possible to create. What that means is that another thing you want to um, ask yourself and to consider as you're creating your summit is how you want to get people registered. How do you want to collect registrations? In other words, how do you want to collect money? Or again, if you're not charging for your summit, that's okay. Um, But how do you want to uh, get people signed up and inform them of the summit uh, events, the locations and everything else, all the information that they need to know? I contemplated the different ways that um, I might have people register for the event, but it didn't take me long to decide that the easiest thing for me to do was to create the summit as a product 
in my Stripe account. So to create a Stripe product um, as the summit and then to link that to my mailing list. Now I've already done this so many times that it's, I don't want to say it's a breeze for me because always the technical stuff um, can be challenging um, and takes time even if we know exactly how to do it in our sleep. But I knew it was going to be the easiest and quickest way for me to organize it and to start um, promoting the summit, getting registrations. And I wanted to start promoting it very quickly because I wanted to give people the time to hear about it and save up if they really wanted to attend. Now I'll talk in a minute about the timing of it and the scheduling of it. But um, I really wanted uh, people to be able to know about it sooner rather than later and to start getting the word out very quickly. And so that meant that the easiest and quickest way for me to set it up on the back end was through the systems and processes that I already had and already was very familiar with. This is a big tip I want to pass along to you. Make it easy for you. There is no need to reinvent the wheel with anything that we do in our Reiki business. There's no need to um, do something brand new and different with all new technology and all new everything in our Reiki business. We can reuse the processes that we're already familiar with and that already feel comfortable to us, that's okay. Is the way that I have done it the best way? Maybe not, but it was the best way at the time and the best way for me, the easiest way. And I really want to encourage you to unabashedly do what's easiest for you in your Reiki business. And it's okay to do that. It's absolutely okay to uh, set up events, summits, workshops, classes in a way that really is time and energy saving for you. Now, what this means is that when you register for the summit, so on the summit's website, standingstoneshealing.com slash summit, you will find that you can register under standard registration or under VIP registration. Now, standard registration is access to all four days of the summit. So all four days live, all of the presentations, all of the networking, all of the group discussions, you get access to all of that. VIP is access to all of that, plus two live Q&A, Reiki Business Q&A sessions with me in December after the summit, plus the summit recordings the speaker recordings. And so you get all of that um, as a VIP. It's only $50 more. And so I set these up as products. Each one is a separate product in my Stripe account. And I connected it, connected it to my email account, my email list. What that means is that when you register for the summit, you are automatically being added to a group in my email list for the summit. And I have it separated out. So standard registration versus VIP registration, because then VIP registration will get the Zoom links for the Q&A and they'll get the recordings and all of that other stuff after the summit ends. So it was really important that I separate out the two groups. But that means that you get put into a group on my mailing list. Now, here's the thing. Yes, you get added to my mailing list, but I have the power to separate you out when I send my general emails out. So for instance, if I send out an email about the podcast, I'll send out an email about this podcast episode. If you are registered for the summit, but you haven't signed up for my list in any other way, you won't get those emails. If you do want to get those emails, you can sign up for my list by getting the free Reiki Biz Kit. The link is below. But um, I can separate you out. I do this because um, I don't say anywhere on the summit website or anywhere on the purchase page that, hey, if you buy this, you're going to get added to my email list. We have to do that. When we're adding someone to our email list, we have to mention that. 
And so I don't. Um, I do mention it in the email um, and explain that whenever you receive your welcome email, um, but that you can join my general list if you want to. But one challenge with uh, doing it this way is that if someone uh, unsubscribes from my email list, they're automatically dropped off of the summit registration list. So I make that clear in the email too. Please don't unsubscribe until after the summit. Um, that's the one drawback to doing it this way. I haven't had any issues yet. I have anticipated having problems with people emailing me and saying, I'm not getting anything about the summit and me looking at the list and saying, well, you unsubscribed, but that hasn't happened yet thankfully, and I hope it doesn't. Um, but uh, I wanted to go with just what was easiest in the moment. That format may change, but it's working. Right now, it is working. Now, as far as that timing, the timing and the scheduling of the summit, I really encourage you when you are contemplating starting a summit, creating a summit or a workshop event, that you consider the timing of it and the timing that will best serve your audience while recognizing that there is no perfect time. There is no time that works for everyone. This is especially true when you are talking about a global online event. There is no best time for everyone across the world. This is particularly true if you do have people who want to attend across the world who are in a completely different time zone and who therefore uh, are going to have a hard time uh, attending your event. I send all of my apologies to everyone across the world on the other side of it, Australia, New Zealand, and all of those places who want so badly to attend the events, particularly the Reiki Business Summit, but who are challenged to because of the time zone. Of course, we have the summit recordings, um, but it, I'll be honest, it's not the same as uh, participating live. And so if you want to get up in the middle of the night and join us, I honor you and thank you. I'm very appreciative and I completely understand if you don't want to. <laughs> But when it comes to the timing, um, I chose November for the Reiki Business Summit for several reasons. Number one, I mentioned that I wanted to give time for people to, um, to save up to uh, attend uh, if they wanted to and didn't have the funds straight away. Um, and I also wanted to offer it after the summer. I did not want to offer it at a time uh, during the summer. The summer is a challenging time for online events. It can be a challenging time for in-person events too, but depending upon the event, the summer might be perfect in person, but for online, it's a little more challenging and um, you'll typically get better attendance during the colder months for online events. Of course, not necessarily always. There are always exceptions. And yes, you can have a summer online event with great attendance, but uh, for the summit, I wanted to have it in the cooler months, late fall into winter, but I did not want to push it into 2025. I wanted to offer it this year. Um, and so uh, that meant that um, November would be the best time because it would avoid all of the holiday stuff in December. And of course, I didn't want to conflict with the Reiki Ray Summit, which happens in November as well. So therefore, the uh, best time for the Reiki Business Summit was uh, that weekend after the Reiki Ray Summit and the one before Thanksgiving here in the States. And so that that is November 22nd to the 25th. So a lot of thought went into the timing of the uh, summit. And so I encourage you to put thought into the timing of your summit, particularly when it is best for your audience, but also it's okay to do it when it's best for you too. You know, if I had done the summit in October, I might be disappointed to be missing out on some potentially gorgeous days to go hiking. I don't mind giving up four days in November, four full days in November. Um, but uh, uh, that was really the best time to offer it. 
at the same time, there is no perfect time. You know, there's so much more to say about hosting a summit, organizing a summit, and taking you behind the scenes of the Reiki Business Summit. I am excited to invite you. Of course, early bird pricing ends on September 30th. So if you are thinking about joining us, please don't delay. Go to standingstoneshealing.com slash summit right now and register so that you don't miss out on that early bird pricing because on October 1st, the price will increase. But I do hope that you will join us. It's going to be an incredible four days. Standingstoneshealing.com slash summit. Sending so many blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business. Thanks for tuning in to the Build Your Reiki Business podcast. Please like, share, subscribe, and send to a friend. Learn more about the Build Your Reiki Business program at standingstoneshealing.com slash build. Sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business.